Hey team, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we will look at how to set up an audit trail, which will capture all the updates and deletes made to your database table. I will create all the database resources that you will need to ensure you have the necessary skills to implement this technology in your next project. Are you ready? Let's do this. All of the source code for this video is available at my GitHub address. Notice I executed the function select version. It told us that we're using PostgreSQL 15. Let's begin. Create table item. Item has three columns, item ID, item name, and a price. Notice the price is nullable. Let's create that table. Now our second task is to insert into item. This is the data that will go into that table. Notice on line 24 and 28, the values are null. We created a price up here and it's nullable. Let's insert that data. Now we're going to create an enum. This enum is called operation enum and it's insert, update, and delete are its values. Now this enum is actually used in our audit table. Notice on line 48, operation, the data type is operation enum. Operation enum says if you're going to put a value into this table, it has to either be an insert, update, or delete. That's what that means. Let's go ahead and create that. And then on the item audit table, notice we have one other special column here, item audit ID. Now item ID, item name, and price, well, you know they came from the item table. You understand what operation means now. Timestamp is when it went down, and user ID is the person that's actually doing this. Now let's talk about item audit ID. Well, what happens is one table can have many updates inserts, and only, of course, one delete. But what we need is another type of number system that keeps track of everything. So what we're doing is we're going to create a sequence, and we're going to call it item audit sequence. I'm going to start it with one, and I'm going to increment by one. And that's the value that will go into this table. So let's go ahead and create the item audit table. You understand the sequence now, and now we're down to some things that we just need to understand. So Let's understand the execution order of a trigger. A, a triggering event occurs, such as an update that we're going to put into the item table. So you can imagine here I have a flashlight. Notice the price is null. When I do an update on this, you know, item number 11, that is when this triggering event occurs. Now, when I go down to that trigger, there's a special variable. It's called the TG underscore underscore OP, a trigger operation. And that gets set inside of this uh, trigger called item audit trigger down here at the bottom. Now we have to put these in order because the way they call each other. For instance, the trigger itself is dependent on populate item audit. So we have to do this one last. But let's go back to the, the execution order. Okay, so you know that some event occurred, you know, the update happened. Then this special variable, it's a reserve word that represents a database operation. And, you know, like I remember, uh, TGOP can be the insert, update, and delete. And uh, I'm not doing the insert because I told you there is like no history of an insert. So uh, an audit trail is just unnecessary. Now, after this variable is set, then that function will call... Uh, populate item audit. That's what puts the record into the audit table. Now remember, this whole thing about an audit trail is we are inside of a transaction. And if there's uh, some kind of error in the system, it will actually auto roll back. But normally, you know, that's you worked out all those issues up front. So the commit will be executed. I have a video that talks about transactions if you're kind of need a little bit of help on what a transaction is. So there it is, it's four steps. So let's talk about where it all begins. So you just learned that a, an event occurred on the table. I did an update command. And that update command called this trigger. And then this trigger set that variable. That variable is now set, so now I'm gonna call populate item audit. Now populate item audit comes in here and it says, what is that? Well remember, that got set. So on the update command, I'm going to do the update, and notice there's all my values. The only thing of interest in this whole method is 
old and there's another one called new. So this is the, when the row is updated, old refers to the original values before the update was made. And of course, next val, this right here is the name of our sequence. So now you understand everything that we need to really get this thing going. The trigger fires, here's the function that will actually push it into the audit uh, table. And then it uh, goes back and does a commit because we're inside of a transaction. So let's go ahead and create this function. Let us now create the trigger. And those are all the resources that we'll need to actually make this happen. Now I'm going to demonstrate how all this stuff works. Let's now select all the items from the table item. Notice that we have 11 items and two of them have uh, null values. And I don't have anything in my audit trail table. It's empty. But now we are going to do our first update. Now you know update is going to cause us to create an audit trail item. Notice for item number seven, where it's null, I'm going to say price equals $29.95. Let's do that update command. Now if I reselect from the table, notice that item number seven has been updated. Now if I go look at my audit trail, notice that we got our first update. And notice the previous value was null. It started off null. Now, if I execute the same thing again, I say, oop, that wasn't 29, that was 19. Let's do an update again. Let's go check out the audit trail. And notice that we get a, kind of like a history. So this is my item ID. The value that it changed from was 29 and I did the update command. Now, if I wanna go in there and delete that, I can say delete from item where Item ID equals seven. Now, before you ever do these type of commands, I recommend that you put what's known as a transaction around it. So you can say begin, and then at the bottom, if it's successful, you can either do the commit or you can do a rollback. You don't know how many times this has saved me over my career. Okay, so let's uh, do begin. Now we're inside of a transaction. So now if I say uh, delete uh, from item, oh, look at that. It just deleted all my items. They're all gone. Oh my goodness. Uh, let me make sure I was in a transaction. Let me roll that back. Okay. I just proved to you that, you know, like little errors like that happen in real life. Okay. So always put your stuff inside of the transaction. So begin tran. And now I'm going to delete that item number seven, and then I'm going to do a uh, commit. Now, if I was really uh, a novice, I would go up there and check to just make sure that number seven is missing and I still have my other data. And notice six, eight, you know, seven is missing. So that's what I wanted. And I'm going to say commit. And there you have that. Let's uh, go check out number uh, the database and we're all done. And by the way, when we were doing that delete, did that go into the audit trail table? You bet it did. Let's do this. Let's say begin trans. Let's go ahead and do that scary delete. Then let's go look at that audit trail table. Notice all the rows are in there, but this is not committed. What you're seeing is actually dirty data. Now, if we come back and say roll back and then go look at that audit trail again, notice they're all gone. And there you have a team. We just created an audit trail, a trigger, did several updates and one scary delete. I hope you were able to learn a thing or two. If you have any questions about this video or just want to leave a message to other programmers about your experience, that would be great. I hope to see you back in my next video. Take care.